ladies, all of these first ladies who give me a nice smile, keep doing that. Whatever you do, when you see I'm getting in a tight, don't say heaven and glory. Don't say that because you pity me, man. I don't want to be pitied, I want to be. Is that right, Sister Gifford? That's the first lady of this church, Mrs. Jackson. Bishop L. L. Thurston.
to the uh, airport to pick me up, and he took so much time. I know he probably thought that he was getting on my nerve. No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm right in the midst of where I'm going when I get in the midst of seconds. Yes. I'm all right. I'm all right. Just take off a piece of bread, give me a piece of it, and let's eat. You don't have to get no special cut of bread for me. Am I right? Bless all of you. Uh, I've been a bishop 23 years. I, I really appreciate what Bishop Johnson is doing uh, with the cooperation of the other bishops. Sometimes you get to be the supposedly uh, responsible person for the events of that group. And these grown people know how to give you a fit. Straight out fit. Y'all hear me? You talk about standing up there, let you go on your knees. Short of backslide. <laughs> talking straight to you now. You know what I'm talking about. So the Lord has blessed us. And, uh, I bless you, Brother Fisher. When Brother Mark, Bishop Mark, comes to Detroit, I want you to be with him. Yeah. Treat him so kind. And to the lady that came to the table, Say what part of the chicken you want to wear that day? She was so nice. What part of the chicken do you want? That's you. That's you. She got a picture of a smile. I said, what part do you want? A piece of chicken. <laughs> Ever since they say welcome to Cass. Come on, give yourselves a picture. Brother uh, Johnson, when I'm staying up too long, you have the right to pull my coat to you. Uh, you are Bishop, uh, Bishop Wooten, but Bishop Douglas better not touch you. Take your 40 hours and pinch off of it, pay your bills, 
be careful with what you do with the remaining that they buy them a hat with that or some shoes. And then next week they want to borrow some of that you miss. Not so. I'm feeling better than you all. It's your mark frightening me talking about all these jurisdictions. I, I thought I was coming over to fellowship with thee and some few members and all these bishops sitting up here. They, they grade me now. <laughs> so why don't bishops all preach? I'm preaching now. <laughs> I know one thing, the Lord has been good to me. <laughs> I've been saw right down through my stern. Broken. The doctor described it to me. Walked my wife and sons right through it. Had three clogged arteries, and the other one was 70% clogged. Now you tell me how I was living. I drove myself through the emergency. They put me in the hospital before I called my wife. I called my wife. I was already admitted. He stood over my bed and told my sons and my wife, poor bedside matters for a doctor. Mm -hmm. He said, you got three clock arteries and the other one is partially, mainly clock. Uh, you have got to have open heart surgery. Yeah. And he described how he was going to do it. He said, we break the stern and take the heart out and take the vein out of your back and repair your heart and put it back in. Am I doing pretty good? Yes, sir. And three years ago. Yes, sir. The Lord is still real.
We witness explosion in transportation, explosion in communication. But still, there is another more significant change that has taken place in a short past. It is uh, uh, the rapid deterioration of genuine faith in Jesus Christ as based upon biblical revelation. Yeah. Am I right, somebody? Yeah. I'm going to pray for them. You're a guest today. Yeah. This is your room. you he's 
stands with our chairman, Patricia Jones. It's been a pleasure, bishops. Uh, bless all of you. I appreciate your indulgence. Staying with me. Um, I know I was up a little long. Thank you. 